Hi everybody, welcome to another video on ethics and corporate governance. Today we will be looking at directors and board structure. So what we will be covering in this video is really to have an understanding of uh, the roles, duties and responsibility of directors in governing uh, companies. We will also look a little bit about the distinction between a unitary board and dual boards. Now, board of directors play a very, very important function in actually governing the company to ensure that the company is being run in a proper manner and there, uh, and there is uh, proper procedures and proper structure within the company. So the board of directors plays a very, very important leadership role within the company itself. Uh, it also helps to control the company, to ensure the company is growing in a healthy manner and it's also being run in a very ethical uh, and uh, complying with regulation uh, and also protecting the interests of stakeholders uh, within the, uh, the, uh, the company. Uh, the, the board of directors is a key, key link between the uh, managers of the company and the investors and shareholders and other stakeholders of the company. Uh, you know, if you refer to the agency principle, then uh, the board of directors plays a monitoring role to ensure that the managers of the company are running the company uh, for the benefit of the principal who are the, either the shareholders, investors or other stakeholders as well. So therefore, the board of directors, having the right board, having an effective board is an essential ingredient in the good governance of a company. Now let's first uh, look at the difference between a unitary board and a dual board. A unitary board, as the name suggests, is really uh, having one single board comprising uh, the executives, people who are in charge of the day-to-day -day running of the company, uh, and non-executives who are independent and uh, who has no connection really with the company. So uh, in a unitary board, uh, it's a collective single board that is responsible for all aspects of the company, uh, from the monitoring of the company, from setting directions of the company, but also overseeing the day-to-day -day running of the business as well. So in terms of appointment of members of the board in a unitary board, the shareholders will elect uh, all of the members of this board. And they normally do it in the annual general meeting, which is held once in a year. Now, compared to a unitary board, a dual board, as the name suggests, uh, comprise of two parts or two separate boards within uh, the, the board of directors. Uh, the first board is really the supervisory board, who are in charge of monitoring the progress of the company and setting the right direction for the business or the company. Then you have the management board. The management board is therefore uh, tasked to run the business on a day-to-day -day basis. So if you look at the dual board, it's obvious that there is a clear separation between the supervision function of the board versus the day-to-day -day management of the business side of the board. Now, in terms of appointment of members of each of these separate boards, the shareholders appoint members of the supervisory board. Uh, and uh, in some countries, even, uh, there is a requirement to have employee representation within these supervisory boards. Uh, in terms of the management board, it is the supervisory board's function to actually appoint members of the management board. So this is the, 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 the types of uh, boards that you will find uh, across the world. However, in Malaysia, uh, we tend to have mostly unitary boards. Uh, dual boards, uh, you can find them in some countries in Europe, for example, in Germany. 
Uh, and um, if you look at it, there are pros and cons. There are strengths and weaknesses of each of these board. Um, so if you look at the dual board, as I've already mentioned, there is clear separation between the supervision function of the uh, board versus the management of the day-to-day -day business. Now, in this case, this will strengthen the monitoring ability of the, uh, of the supervisory board because the supervisory board is normally made up of people who, have, uh, who are independent, who have no connection with the day-to-day -day running of the business. So because they are more independent, then the monitoring of the management board can be more effective compared to a unitary board where you have both the executive and non-executive sitting in one board. So it becomes more challenging to actually provide that monitoring function. However, a dual board will have some disadvantage. Uh, because of the split of the board, then the management board is tasked to do the running of the business on a day-to-day -day basis. Obviously, the management board will have more information about what's going on. So therefore, uh, if they do not pass on the information to the supervisory board, then you'll have information asymmetry. So in the dual board, there is a more challenge in terms of ensuring information asymmetry is reduced. But in a unitary board, because the executives and non-executives sit in the same board, then there's likely to be more free flow of information uh, between the management team versus uh, the, uh, the, the, the board, the non-executive directors. So in a unitary board, uh, information asymmetry perhaps is not uh, likely to, or there's less chance of it uh, occurring. So let's look back at the role of the board uh, more, uh, in more detail. Right? So the board plays three important functions. The first is really to set the right direction for the company itself. Uh, that, that, that direction uh, ensures growth and prosperity, not just for shareholders, but for all stakeholders of the company. And um, if, re if you recall in my previous video where we talked about the Malaysian code, uh, it's important that this direction, uh, especially for Malaysian companies, takes into account environmental, social and governance issues as well. The, other second, the second function of the board is really to play its accountability role to its stakeholders. This would include reporting uh, you know, back to the shareholders and stakeholders as to the, the progress and development of the company, uh, ensuring that uh, risks uh, are being addressed through uh, proper internal controls, etc., etc. Right. So they must perform their accountability function well as well. And finally, and, and, and last but not least, um, the role of the board is really also to ensure that there is a group of highly qualified, uh, ethical, uh, well-trained uh, 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 people running the company on a day-to-day -day basis. And it, they, in addition to that, the role of the board is also to ensure that the company is being run in a proper manner and there is a right culture in place to promote ethical and value-based behavior within the company as well. Now let's have a look at the role and duties of the board uh, and responsibility of the board. Uh, as, as I mentioned earlier, the board really functions as a monitoring uh, a body to oversee the managers to protect the interests of the principal. <coughs> However, there is a risk that the board may also be dominated by the agents, the management. So there is going to be a tension between uh, the role to protect the interests of the principal as well as to try to reduce the dominance of the agent. And this happens by uh, the appointment of uh, the executives versus the non-executives directors within the board. And we need to have the right balance of executives and non-executives. And in most boards, they are likely to be m the majority members of the board are non-executive directors. This is to ensure that the company or the board plays 
uh, the, in a, in an effective role in actually protecting the interests of its principals, its shareholders, and its other stakeholders. If a board is dominated by a lot of ex uh, many executives, then the ability of the company or the board to play its role in protecting the principal may be affected. So there need to be the right balance of executives and non-executives in the company. Now let's have a look at the various key roles that you will find within a board of directors. Firstly, we will have the chair of the board or the chairperson of the board. The chairperson of the board provides overall leadership as to the function of the board itself. Uh, so one of the key uh, uh, roles of the chairperson of the board is really to manage board meetings to ensure that um, sufficient notice is given to members of the board, sufficient information is also given to the board to analyze and oversee and monitor the performance of the executives. Uh, the chair of the board is also tasked to ensure that there is free flow of information, that people, members, any members of the board can ask questions and, and they must also be allowed to ask uh, probing questions to really challenge the, the executives and the management of the company. The, second, the, the next important person uh, is the chief executive officer or the CEO of the company. Now, the CEO of the company is tasked to really lead the business side of the company. Uh, so the CEO is in charge of looking at uh, implementing the marketing strategy, production schedules, uh, you know, a customer service, uh, the, 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 the funding of the company, uh, where they are getting the funding, etc. So they do the day-to-day -day running of the business. Now, essentially, ideally, uh, the chairperson of the board uh, must be separate from the chief executive officer of the board in the sense that it cannot be held, uh, the two positions cannot be held by the same person. Right? Uh, the, the reason why it needs to be separated is that when, when the chairperson is a different person, uh, then the chair can play a more effective role in monitoring the activities of the CEO and his team. Uh, if they are one and the same person, then this monitoring role will be limited and affected uh, adversely. Uh, the next person that is quite important within a uh, board of directors is really the company secretary. And the company secretary really is to help the chair to run the, the board activities, the meetings, uh, scheduling the meetings, ensuring uh, directors are informed of the meetings and there's notice and there's paperwork concerning the meetings. But the company secretary also functions as an advisor uh, on governance matters as far as the code of corporate governance is concerned, the compliance of the code, etc. Et so normally a company secretary tends to have a little bit of legal background as well to be able to assist the board effectively. And last but definitely not least is the component of the board that comprise of non-executive directors. And essentially non-executive directors are directors that have no connection with the day-to-day -day running of the business or do not, help, do not hold significant amount of shares within the company as well. Uh, so these non-executive directors play an important role in monitoring the executives, the CEO and his team. Right. So these are some of the key uh, positions and roles and duties and responsibilities of members of the board of directors. So in summary, we have looked at the roles and duties and responsibilities of the board as a whole and also members of the, the board of directors as well. Uh, we have looked at some of the key variations in boards between unitary boards and dual boards. Uh, and as I said, in Malaysia, we tend to have most companies uh, practicing or, or having unitary boards. So I hope this video has been useful to give you an overview of the function and roles and function of the board of directors of a company. So till we meet again in the next video, uh, take care and stay safe.